everyone and welcome to our channel, Facts Intrigue. Our video is called Far Out Facts About Cats, Things You Should Know About Your Feline Fur Baby. In this video, I'm going to share some interesting and intriguing information about these amazing creatures. Let's start with bones. Cats have 244 bones, while humans only have 206. Most of the cat's bones are in their tails and paws. Cat's tails are made of up to 20 to 23 bones. Cat's paws have more bones than humans. Cats have 18 to 20 bones while humans feet have only 26 bones. The extra bones in cats tails help them to balance and be more agile. Cats are also able to rotate their hind legs 180 degrees which help them to climb and jump. The extra bones in cats bodies also help them to absorb shock. This is important for cats because they are often jumping and running. So while humans may be bigger than cats, Cats have more bones because they need them to move and survive in their environment. Adult cats generally have 30 teeth, while kittens have 26. People ask if cats are related to tigers. Although it is true that a house cat is genetically 95.6% tiger, not actually accurate. It is based on the study that was published in the Journal of Natural Communications in 2013. The study compared the genomes of domestic cats, tigers, and other big cats. The study found that domestic cats share 95.6% of their DNA with tigers. However, this does not mean that the house cat is 95.6% tiger. There are many other genes that make up a cat, and these genes can vary from cat to cat. The study also found that there are some genes that are unique to domestic cats. This means that domestic cats are not simply miniature tigers. They are their own distinct species with their own unique genetic makeup. So while it's true that the domestic cat shares a lot of DNA with tigers, they are not the same animal. They are different species with their own unique characteristics. How far can cats travel? For short distances, cats can run around 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers for those who use the metric system. How far can cats travel in one day? Based on my research, studies show that domestic cats generally travel about one eighth to one quarter mile a day. However, there are some cats that have been known to travel much further. One study found that a cat named Sugar traveled over 200 miles to get back to her own hometown in Florida. And another study found that a cat named Oscar traveled over 100 miles to find his way home after being lost. I'm not sure how they knew that information, but according to research, it's true. The distance a cat travels a day can vary depending on a number of factors, including their age, breed, and personality. Younger cats, of course, are generally more active and tend to travel more than older cats. Some breeds of cats, such as the Maine Coon, are known for being very active and may travel more than other breeds. Now, cats can jump five times their height, and cats can see in the dark six times better than humans. Cats have a third eyelid that helps them protect their eyes from dust and debris. The third eyelid membrane is a transparent or translucent eyelid present in some animals that protect and moisten the eye maintaining vision. It is present in many animals, including cats, dogs, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and sharks. Cats can purr at a frequency of up to 250 hertz, which is thought to have healing properties. This frequency is within the range of sound waves that has been shown to have therapeutic effects on humans and other animals. For example, studies have shown that sound waves in the 20 to 150 hertz range can help to increase bone density, reduce pain, improve circulation, promote relaxation, reduce stress, and actually boost the immune system. In addition to the physical benefits, cat's purrs can also have a calming and relaxing effect on humans. Cat purrs when they are happy, content, or nursing their kittens. However, they can also purr when they are stressed or in pain. The purring of a cat can be heard up to 100 feet away. If you have a cat, you may have noticed that they purr when they are in your lap or when you are petting them. This is because they enjoy the physical contact and the feeling of being close to you. The purring is also a way for them to show their love and affection. So next time you hear your cat purring, take a moment to appreciate the healing powers of this unique sound. Cats are the only mammals that cannot taste sweetness. They have a gene that is responsible for detecting sweetness, but this gene is mutated in cats. This means that they cannot taste the sweetness of sugar or other sweet foods. However, cats still can taste other flavors, 
such as sour, bitter, salty, and umami. Umami is a savory taste that is often described as meaty or brothy, which is why they are attracted to meat and fish. The reasons why cats can't taste sweetness is not fully understood. However, it is thought to be an adaptation of their diet. Cats are carnivores, and their diet consists mainly of meat. Meat does not contain any sugar so there's no need for cats to be able to taste sweetness. The lack of sweetness taste also helps cat to avoid poisonous plants. Many poisonous plants contain sugar, and if cats could taste sweetness, they could be more likely to eat them. Now that's not to say that they won't try to eat a poisonous plant, but they generally will not go after those plants that are sweet. So while cats can't taste sweetness, they still can enjoy a variety of other flavors, and their lack of sweet tooth may actually be a good thing for their health. Cats are lactose intolerant, so they shouldn't drink milk. Why? Because they don't produce the enzymes, the lactis, which is needed to digest lactose, which is a sugar found in milk. When cats drink milk, the lactose is not digested and can cause digestive problems such as diarrhea, vomiting, and gas. Lactose intolerance is common in cats because they are not naturally designed to digest milk after they are weaned. Kittens need milk to survive, generally their mother's milk, but their bodies start to produce less lactis as they get older. So by the time they are adults, most cats are lactose intolerant. There are a few exceptions to this rule, however. Some cats may be able to digest milk without any problems. This is usually because they have a mutation that allows them to produce more lactis. It is still best to avoid giving milk to cats, even if they seem to be able to tolerate it. You can also give your cat lactose-free yogurt or kefir. Here are some other things to keep in mind if you're giving your cat milk. Do not give your cat too much milk. Too much milk can cause diarrhea and other digestive problems. Do not give your cat milk that is sweetened or flavored. These types of milk contain artificial sweeteners that are harmful to cats. And do not give your cat milk that is past its expiration date. Expired milk can contain harmful bacteria that can make your cat sick. If you're concerned about your cat's lactose intolerance, you should talk to your veterinarian. They can help you determine if your cat is lactose intolerant and recommend a lactose-free milk or other milk-based treat that is safe for your cat to eat. Cats are crepuscular animals, which means they are most active at dawn and dusk. Cats are solitary hunters, and cats do have natural predators. The natural predators of cats vary depending on the species of a cat and where they live. However, some of the most common predators of cats include birds of prey. Hawks, owls, and eagles are all natural predators of cats. They are able to swoop down and catch cats in their talons. I have seen this firsthand. Coyotes. Coyotes are large, opportunistic predators that are found in North America. They are known to prey on cats, as well as other small animals. Foxes. It is a misconception of many that foxes will not prey on cats. It is not true, however. Foxes are also opportunistic predators that are found in many parts of the world. They are known to prey on cats, especially kittens, as well as other small animals. Dogs. Dogs are not typically considered natural predators of cats, but they can be if they are not properly socialized or if they are feeling threatened. Believe it or not, snakes can be predators of cats, especially kittens. However, they are not as common of a threat as other predators. In regions where very large boa constrictors and python snakes live, such in Florida, cats could be caught off guard and become a meal for a larger species of snakes. Cats can live up to 20 years, but the average lifespan is about 15 years old. There are many exceptions, however, and cats have lived beyond their anticipated lifespan. For example, the oldest living cat on record is Cream Puff, a tabby cat from Austin, Texas, who lived to be 38 years and three days old. She was born on August 3, 1967, and died August 6, 2005. Her owner, Jake Perry, also owned another cat, Grandpa Rex Allen, who lived to be 34 years and 59 days old. Cream Puff and Grandpa Rex Allen were both featured in the Guinness Book of World Records. The average lifespan of cats, as mentioned earlier, is about 15 to 20 years, so Cream Puff's lifespan was well above average. Her longevity is attributed to many factors, including good genetics, a healthy diet, and regular exercise. She also had a loving and attentive owner who took great care of her. Cream Puff's story is an inspiration to cat lovers everywhere. She shows that with good care and love, cats can live long and healthy lives. We had a cat, Skeeter, that lived to be 23 years old, so they can live past their expected lifespan with the right care. How long is the gestation period of a cat, and what is their average litter size? What is the largest litter size of a cat on record? Well, first of all, 
The gestation period of a cat is typically 63 to 65 days. However, it can range from 58 to 71 days. The average litter size for a cat is four to six kittens, but it can range from one to 12 kittens. The largest litter size for a cat on record is 19 kittens. Here are some factors that can affect the gestation period of a litter. First of all, the breed. Some breeds of cats, such as Mancoon, tend to have larger litters than other breeds. The age. Younger cats tend to have smaller litters than older cats. Health. A cat that is healthy and well-nourished is more likely to have a healthy litter. Nutrition. A cat that is well-nourished is more likely to have a healthy litter. And stress. A stressed cat is more likely to have a miscarriage or smaller litter. Here are some other interesting facts about cat litters. Kittens are born blind and deaf. They can't open their eyes for about seven to 10 days and they can't hear for about 14 days. Kittens are born with teeth. They have 26 baby teeth, which they will lose and replace with adult teeth between the ages of three and six months. Kittens are weaned from their mother's milk around six to eight weeks old. Kittens reach sexual maturity at about six months of age. However, it is best to wait until they are at least one year of age before breeding them. What are female cats referred to? Well, female cats are called queens. The term queen is used to distinguish female cats from male cats, which are called toms, or in other words, tomcats. Female cats can also be called mews and kitties. The term queen is thought to have originated from the fact that the female cat are often dominant and territorial. They're also known to be very protective of their kittens. It is important to note that the terms used to refer to female cats can vary depending on the region and culture. For example, in the country of Japan, female cats are referred to as Mike Nico, which translate to three fur and is thought to bring good luck. When a female cat is in heat, female cats do not experience menstruation. Instead, they undergo ovulation where the eggs are released from the ovaries and travel through the fallopian tubes. She will attract tomcats by releasing pheromones. Once she is pregnant, she will give birth usually between four and six kittens. The reproductive system of female cats is complex and unique. Female cats can reach sexual maturity around the age of six months of age, and their cycle typically lasts between a week and 10 days. During this time, they become receptive to mating and will generally display certain behaviors and rubbing against objects. With our cat, Lucy, we let her have her first heat cycle before having her spayed. She is an indoor cat and we wanted her to have one heat cycle before having her spayed. This was our personal choice. I will tell you though, when she went through this heat cycle, the whole household knew it. She was beyond vocal and was throwing herself all over the floor. It was actually difficult to watch and we never wanted to see her have to go through that again. In her case, it looked as if she was going through quite the ordeal. It is recommended by veterinarians to spay females prior to their first heat cycle. Spaying your female cat is very essential for several reasons. Firstly, it prevents unwanted litters. Just walk into any shelter or rescue and that would become very obvious. Secondly, veterinarians confirm that spaying a female cat reduces the risk of certain types of cancer, such as ovarian and uterine. Spaying Spaying your cat can also prevent behavioral issues such as aggression and marking their territory. It is recommended to spay your female cat before their first heat cycle, which can occur as early as four months of age. Our channel supports spay and neutering programs, so we encourage you to spay and neuter your pets. When female cats are ready to mate, they can and often will mate with multiple tomcats, and the kittens in a litter may have different fathers. Kittens are born blind and deaf, as mentioned earlier, and they will start to see and hear in about two weeks. They will start to eat solid food after about four weeks. Besides the obvious, what are the differences between male and female cats? There are behavioral and personality differences between male and female cats. Female cats are known to be more independent and territorial than males. They are also more likely to be vocal and affectionate towards their owners. Male cats, on the other hand, tend to be more laid back and relaxed. They are less territorial and more likely to roam. Cats can rotate their ears 180 degrees. The position of a cat's ear can also tell you a lot about how they are feeling. For example, if a cat's ears are flattened against its head, it's likely feeling stressed or scared. If the ears are perked up and facing forward, 
The cat is likely alert and curious. So next time you see a cat with its ears turned in different directions, you know that it is just trying to figure out where the noise is coming from. Cats can hear much better than humans. They can hear sounds that are four times higher in frequency than humans can hear. This is because cats have a wider range of hearings, the range of hearing so that they can recover. Did you know that cats have whiskers on their face? legs, and even their paws. These whiskers help them sense their surroundings and avoid obstacles. Cats are very clean animals and spend a lot of time grooming. They lick their fur to remove dirt, debris. They also use their rough tongues to lick their coat clean. When they are feeding, their rough tongues come in handy to clean meat completely from the bones. Cats are good at climbing and can easily scale trees and other vertical surfaces. Cats are very independent animals and can take care of themselves. However, they still enjoy spending time with their humans and can form strong bonds with them. Just because cats are independent and can take care of themselves for the most part, it doesn't mean owners should not provide water, food, and shelter. It is our responsibility as our humans to ensure their well-being and safety and that all their needs are being met. Cats can be trained to do tricks just like dogs. However, they are not as eager to please as dogs, so training them can be more challenging and really on their terms. Cats are very expressive animals. They use their body language to communicate with each other and with humans. For example, a cat that is wagging its tail is happy, while a cat that is arching its back is feeling threatened. Cats have been domesticated for over 9,500 years. They are now one of the most popular pets in the world. Do cats sweat, someone asked. While cats do not sweat through their skin like humans, they do have sweat glands in a few specific areas of their body, including the pads of their feet, lips, chin, and on the skin that surrounds their anus. When the body sends a message to the brain that the body's temperature has gotten too high, the brain sends signals to these glands to start sweating. However, sweating is not the primary way the cats cool themselves down. Cats cool themselves down primarily through panting, grooming, and by seeking out cool surfaces to lie on. Panting helps to evaporate moisture from the cat's tongue and respiratory tract, which helps to cool the body down. Grooming to remove excess heat from the cat's fur. And by seeking out cool surfaces such as the floor or shady spot, cats can help lower their body temperature. In addition to sweating, cats can have a few other ways to regulate their body temperature. For example, they can dilate their blood vessels, which allows more blood to flow through the surface of the skin where it can cool down and they can also shiver which helps to generate heat when cold. The way that cats regulate their body temperature is very efficient and it allows them to live in a variety of climates. However, if a cat gets too hot, it can suffer from heat stroke. Heat stroke is a serious condition that can be fatal if not treated promptly. If you think your cat is overheating, there are a few things you can do to help them cool down. Move them to a cool, shady spot. Offer them plenty of fresh water. Apply a cool, wet cloth to their fur. Fan them. Take them to the vet if they are not cooling down. Here are some things that cats do not enjoy. As we mentioned earlier, loud noises. Cats have sensitive hearing, so loud noises can be very stressful for them. New people or animals. Cats are naturally cautious creatures, so they may not be comfortable around new people or other animals. It can take some time for them to adjust to new surroundings and new faces, so give them time in doing that. Change. So any major changes in their environment, such as moving to a new home or getting a new pet, can be stressful for them. Being picked up or held. Some cats don't like being picked up or held, especially if they are not used to it. If you do need to pick up your cat, be gentle and try to avoid holding them for too long. Petting. Cats have sensitive skin, so rough petting can be uncomfortable for them. If your cat seems to be avoiding being petted, or if they seem to be in pain when you pet them, it's best to stop. Water. Most cats don't like water, and they may even be afraid of it. This is because they are not as good at swimming as most dogs and they can easily get water in their ears and eyes. But there are some cats that do enjoy being in the water. It is generally the exception to the rule. Certain smells. Some cats are sensitive to certain smells such as citrus fruits, perfumes, and cleaning products. If your cat seems to be avoiding certain areas of your home, or if they seem to be sneezing or coughing, it's possible that they are reacting to the smell. Not only that, there are some perfumes, air fresheners, candles, and incense that can actually be toxic to a cat. So be sure to do your homework to make sure that you're not inadvertently harming them. 
Being alone. Cats are social creatures, and they don't like being alone for long periods of time. If you're going to be away from home for a long time, it is best to have someone come and check on your cat or to board them at a pet hotel. It is important to be aware of what your cat does and does not enjoy so that you can make sure to create a comfortable and stress-free environment for them where they can thrive. Both purebred and mixed breed cats can be susceptible to a variety of illnesses. Some of the most common illnesses that cats can get include feline upper respiratory infection. This is a common viral infection that can cause symptoms such as sneezing, coughing, and eye discharge. Feline lower urinary tract disease. This is a group of diseases that affect the urinary tract and can cause symptoms such as difficulty urinating, blood in the urine, and straining to urinate. Feline panleukopenia. This is a serious viral infection that can be fatal and can cause symptoms such as liver, fever, vomiting, and diarrhea. Feline leukemia. This is a virus that can cause a variety of health problems, including cancer, anemia, and immune system problems. Feline immune deficiency virus. This is a virus that can cause weakened immune system and can make cats more susceptible to other infections. Heartworm disease. Yes, cats can get heartworms, just like dogs. This is a serious condition caused by a parasite that lives in the heart and lungs, caused by the bite of a mosquito. Diabetes. This is a condition where the body does not produce enough insulin, a hormone that helps to regulate blood sugar levels. Kidney disease. This is a condition that affects the kidneys and can cause symptoms such as increased thirst, urination, and weight loss. Cats can get cancer just like humans, skin cancer, and mast cell tumors. Any of these illnesses can be affected by a number of factors, including their age, breed, lifestyle, and environment. It is important to take your cat to the vet for regular checkups so that any health problems can be detected early and treated by it is also important to note that purebred cats are more likely to inherit certain genetic diseases than mixed breed cats. Some of the most common genetic diseases in purebred cats include progressive retinal atrophy. This is a condition that causes the retina to degenerate and can eventually lead to blindness. Hip dysplasia. Like dogs, cats can get hip dysplasia. This is a condition that affects the hip joints and can cause pain and lameness in cats. Hip dysplasia is a medical condition that describes the abnormal development development of the hip joint. In cats with hip dysplasia, the ball does not sit firmly in the socket, which results in a loose joint. This abnormal hip joint leads to pain and reduced function. Over time, this poor connection leads to early arthritis. As the body tries to stabilize the joint and compensate for abnormality, laying down new bone and bone spurs. Hip dysplasia is an inherited condition and purebred cats have a higher chance of developing it. Hip dysplasia is more common in big boned large cats such as mancoons, but any cat can suffer from hip dysplasia. The most common clinical signs of hip dysplasia in cats include the reluctance to jump to high surfaces, avoiding stairs, a hesitant to squat in the litter box and going to the bathroom outside the litter box. They may not be able to pick up their legs properly to get into the box. If you suspect that your cat has hip dysplasia, it is best to consult with your veterinarian for an accurate diagnosis and treatment option. If you are considering getting a purebred cat, it is important for you to do research to learn about the breed's health history, as well as the parents, and the potential genetic diseases the cat may be exposed to. Flea allergies are the most common type of allergies in cats. Flea saliva contains proteins that can trigger an allergic reaction in cats. Symptoms of flea allergy include excessive scratching, hair loss, and skin irritation. Food. Cats can be allergic to certain ingredients in their food, such as beef, chicken, fish, dairy, or grains. Symptoms of food allergies include vomiting, diarrhea, and skin problems. Pollen. Cats can be allergic to pollen from trees, grasses, and weeds. Symptoms of pollen allergy include sneezing, coughing, and eye discharge. Mold. Cats can be allergic to mold spores that can be found in the air or in the environment. Symptoms of mold allergy include sneezing, coughing, and eye discharge. Dust mites. Dust mites are tiny insects that live in dust and can trigger allergic reactions in cats. Symptoms of dust mite allergy include sneezing, coughing, and eye discharge. Some floor cleaners leave a residue that could actually be toxic to a cat. When a cat walks across the floor, the toxic residue could transfer to 
the pads of their paws, and when they clean their paws, they could ingest that residue that could be detrimental to their health. See a veterinarian immediately if you think your cat has been exposed to poisons and toxins. If your cat is allergic to fleas, use a flea control medication that is approved for cats. Do not use dog flea control on cats. You could lose your pet by doing so. Chocolate. Chocolate contains theobromine, a compound that is toxic to cats and dogs. Dark chocolate is more toxic than milk chocolate, and small cats are more sensitive to theobromine than larger cats. Grapes and raisins. Grapes and raisins cause kidney failure in cats and dogs. Even a small amount of grapes or raisins can be harmful to a cat, so it's important to keep them out of the reach of your cat. Onions and garlic. Onions and garlic can damage red blood cells in cats, leading to anemia. This can happen even if the cat only eats a small amount of onions or garlic. Yeast dough. Yeast dough can rise in the stomach of a cat and cause gas, bloating, and even death. Xylitol. This applies to both cats and dogs. Xylitol is a sugar substitute that is found in many foods and drinks. It is very toxic to cats and dogs, which can cause low blood sugar, seizures, and death. There there's even peanut butter on the market that has xylitol in it. So anything you think might be okay to give to your cat or dogs, make sure that you are reading the labels that there are no artificial sweeteners of any kind. Salt. Eating too much salt can cause dehydration and electrolyte imbalance in cats. This can lead to a variety of health problems including kidney failure. Alcohol. Alcohol is toxic to cats, dogs, and any other animal. It can cause intoxication, seizures, and even death. They cannot process alcohol. So please do not give your pets alcohol. Plants. Some plants are poisonous to cats, including lilies, sago palms, and poinsettias. And these plants are equally poisonous to dogs as well. It is important to keep these plants out of the reach of your pets. If you think your cat has eaten something poisonous, it is important to call your veterinary immediately. Pay special attention to cleaners that have pine oil in them. They are toxic. In conclusion, these are just a few of the far out facts about cats. I hope you learned something new. If you like this video about cats, you will love the next video called Urban Cat Myths Debunk. You will be amazed over the crazy myths we have uncovered. Be sure to like and subscribe and ring the bell to be informed of when our next video is up. If you have any other questions or requests, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a blessed day.